Here we go. Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. Here we are back doing the Tarot Lessons 101 Minor Arcanas, and this is going to be the Suit of Swords. So as I was mentioning to you guys in the previous one of the Pentacle Suit, we're going to be talking about the Swords energy, the elements, and what each card represents. Keeping in mind, as always, that like I had previously mentioned in the previous video, uh, when we're talking about the when we're talking about the minor arcanas, the number two, three, and four cards of any suit are represented by the cardinal signs. And the cardinal signs is Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. Moving along five, six, and seven cards in any suit is represented by the fixed signs, which is Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. And finally, eight, nine, and 10 are with the energy of mutable signs, which is Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. Why is this important to remember? Because it's going to help you when you're looking into the cards or when you are doing a reading for yourself or for someone else to be able to tell time frames. This is why it is important to understand that and note it down for yourself to remember, okay? So as I was mentioning to you guys, when we talk about the swords, here we have the ace of swords. Before we get into the meaning of the ace, let's talk a little bit more about the energy of the swords. And the swords is represented by the element of air. And this is to do all with communication, with intellect, with thoughts, ideas, and how we express ourselves. Swords is not a easy suit, and it is uh, not forgiving from the voluntary solitude of the two of swords to the devastation of the 10, as an example. There is a simple beauty and very direct when we're talking about the swords. All of the excess will be paired away. Um, all obstacles are made clear, and there are a few emotions and distractions to keep uh, change from happening. So again, the Ace of Swords or the Suit of Swords is very unforgiving, but there is beauty behind it. Why? Because what does a sword do? It cuts, right? So you're able to cut through patterns, through BS, if you will. You're able to see more clearly or express more clearly. All of this is what you will find in this suit. Now, the Ace of Swords is the essence of swords, like we've mentioned in previous videos. Using only intellect, we charge ahead. Um, as an example, the Two of Swords, we call it the shut the hell up card, right? <laughs> um, it's the shut the hell up so I can hear myself being card. There is a decision to be made and she has cut off all distractions distractions, so that she can make it herself. The three is unyielding and brutal. The four is putting your thoughts at rest and the five is discord and warning to carry yourself well. The six of swords is caution to clear your mind and the seven is sneaky and impulsive. Eight speaks to the feeling of being trapped and powerless, even though you're probably not, it has more to do with the mind and with your thoughts. Um, the nine, you know, it's about worry and guilt. And then there's the 10th, right? The 10th card. Um, I'm not sure that there is a bleaker card in the tarot, if you want me to be completely honest. And yet there is something amazing benefit to having these cards come up for you in a reading even the 10 sometimes all you need to know is that this is the lowest point that it won't get any worse and you can gather the strength and move on sometimes with the two you know that the answer is inside of you and you just have to eliminate distractions to find it sometimes that give us um gives us the confidence to trust our own answers 
swords are an air sign and are about intellect and clarity. That being said, it's easy to get caught up in the symbols of the tarot and forget that these items, these magical items have everyday um, use as well. So as an example, the wand, you know, the pentacle or the coin, the cup or the chalice and the swords, um, it's a sword, right? So you can go, you can get very basic with these. What does a sword do? It cuts things through, right? It's a weapon. It can scare the bejesus out of people. Um, in, in the case of the Ace of Swords, it's not aggression, but assertion. You can be mighty. You can be respected and defend yourself. You can um, make yourself heard and have courage. So this is something to keep in mind when we're talking about the swords. Uh, it is not necessarily the easiest um the easiest of elements to deal with why because this is primarily to do with intellect and communication it has a lot to do with the mastery of the mind um ace of swords would be as an example clear headed uh knowing exactly what to do and being assertive about it whereas the nine of swords as an example it is the overwhelmingness of not knowing or not having clarity that sometimes our own thoughts could be our worst enemy right because whatever you put energy to whatever you believe to be true um could be positive or could be negative but ultimately you're the one that determines that and how by the way you think by the way you express yourself or lack thereof so Let's talk a little bit here about the Ace of Swords. This card represents the essence of swords, the essence of the intellect. Quick, a bolt of lightning striking uh, striking you and gives you the best idea of your life. You make a good decision. You cut to the chase. Get it? Because it's swords. The sword is one of the elemental tools in some pagan religions representing either air or fire depending on the tradition. For me, swords are represented by the element of air. The blade is used to direct energy, cast a circle of power. And of course, it also has to do with uh, the invoking of the guardians of the ritual that is taking place. It works as a focus object for the mind, very apt. Do you know that feeling you get when you just know the answer to something? You can find your way through the puzzle. You figured it out and everyone else has missed it. You know exactly where to go, when to go, how to go, and what you're going to do when you get there. You have no doubt emotion doesn't enter the decision. It is certainty, plain and simple. This card is the truth. It doesn't matter what you thought was right. It doesn't matter how you were raised. The truth will cut all of the nonsense away. It is sharp, it cuts to the heart of the matter, and it strips bare the assumptions that we've carried with us. So again, the ace of the ace of car, uh, sorry, the ace of swords is a very powerful card when you get this in a reading because it's giving you a definite yes. It is giving you clarity, it's giving you insight, it is giving you the right to carry or vibrate certainty. Um, and it is exactly that cutting through the BS, cutting through, uh, you know, other people's, uh, what they believe to be true. It is no emotion is connected to the suit of swords, um, from the ace of swords all the way to the 10 of swords. There is no emotion here. Even when we talk about the Royals, when we talk about the page of swords, when we talk about the knight of swords, when we talk about the queen and king of swords, there is no emotion connected to this suit. Why? Because it is making the decisions or taking action that is not based or ruled on emotion, but on intellect, what is right and what is wrong. Um, it's very much to the point and it is very much... Um, it's kind of like, think of it as the way I see the Ace of Swords is, uh, to me, um, kind of like that saying goes, I'd rather, 
I'd rather know the truth than to be lied or to be hurt with a lie. Um, so even though sometimes the truth can be painful or it can be hurtful, um, nonetheless, it is the truth. So again, Ace of Swords, very powerful card. Keep in mind, aces, all aces of any suit carry all of the cards, right? From the one, which is the ace, all the way to the 10, all the way to the royals. It is the pure essence of swords. So moving along here, we're going to go now with the two of swords. And like I had mentioned to you guys, um, the two of swords is the way I see it is when this card comes up, it's more to do with the wanting or needing or even at a soul level, having the need to find time for yourself. It is the shut the hell up card because you're trying to think, you're trying to listen to your inner voice. There's a very powerful, powerful card here because when I see this in a reading, it usually indicates sometimes the client may be dealing through many different things and there's a lot of distraction and there is a need to either retreat to be able to recharge or to retreat, to be able to have more of, to get more clarity, to disconnect from all of those distractions and to find your inner truth. Two of swords. Um, I think that there is a point in nearly everyone's life where you realize that you're alone. Maybe it's after high school sitting in your dorm room. Maybe it's after you leave your parents' house for the last time without looking back. Maybe you feel alone after you've gone from uh, your parents to college to husband to single and you're uh, you know splitting time with your kids for the first time. Maybe your parents have you know passed on or died or gone um, and you're the grown-up now. We all got someone theoretically speaking here that um, we didn't hatch. As I grow um, older though, I realized that the process of growing up will strip people away from you. Friends will betray you. People will go uh, or people will go weird and stop calling. Your family is imperfect and suddenly you look around and instead of two tables full of cousins, um, at Thanksgiving, as an example, it's just you. Um, or maybe you're lonely and in a relationship. There isn't a thing, there isn't anything that is lonelier in the world than sharing a bed with someone uh, you can talk to. It's emptying and devaluing and sad. First, being alone and being lonely are two different things. Being alone means that you've got no one to connect with. I feel alone. I feel alone is a deeper state of being than lonely. That feeling that you get lost, there will be no, no one there to find you. I remember thinking when I first became alone, and if I fell down the stairs, no one would find me uh, for three days. And the aforementioned um, feeling lonely, you know, feeling alone, nothing like freaking yourself out if doing laundry or walking downstairs ever again, right? Being lonely means that your boss was a complete ass and you don't have anyone uh, to conversate with or that you haven't been you know, touched for a while, as an example. I've seen that when the condition of aloneness is new. It's startling. Who knew the house uh, could be quiet? Why does everything sound like a murder in your basement? Why is it you're only hungry for cold cereal and left uh, and leftovers and don't seem to change clothes as much or shower or anything really? I want to propose, however, that there is strength in solitude. I call the two of swords the shut the hell up card so that I can hear myself think card. It's about being alone. This woman has, you know, grabbed a chair, a blindfold and a few swords and marched herself into the middle of nowhere. All of her other senses are cut off. She doesn't need external influence for the decisions she needs to make. 
She doesn't need distractions. She is alone and okay with that. This is something she needs to figure out for herself. In the wandering narrative of tarot, this is what happens after the shock of alone goes away. When you realize that you don't need the world's chatter to make sense of your life. That moment when you wander away by the shore, pull up a seat on a bench and blindfold yourself against distractions. So there is a very powerful energy in this two of swords. Sometimes it is often confused, right? A lot of the times I've had uh, or I've heard uh, other tarot readers uh, speak of the two of swords as, you know, not really wanting to make a decision or feeling like you are disconnected, which in some aspect may be true, but this is out of a necessity. It's not that you're being forced to, is that there is a need in you to cut distractions out to be able to find your inner truth. So the power in this two of swords is that, yes, while sometimes people can confuse being alone to being lonely. And those are two different things. And in this card, I don't see it much about being lonely. It has more to do with the having the need to be alone, to gather your thoughts, to get clarity of mind. Sometimes being surrounded by family, by friends, by, you know, others around you that are more in the hype, as an example, you can get caught up in that hype and as an example, I've had clients come to me and this card comes up. And then while, of course, it has a lot to do with the other cards that follow, it would indicate to me that the client is in major need of finding their inner truth. And they're not going to find that if they are continuously being surrounded by people or going with the crowd, so to speak, because they will always feel this emptiness, this emptiness that needs to be filled and they usually use escapism as different, you know, whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs, whether it's partying, whatever the situation may be, um, to try to fill that void. When in reality, that void is that they are not really, in essence, listening to their inner voice. It's kind of like, like I mentioned, having the need to retreat, to be able to recharge, um, sometimes we can get caught up with life or caught up in the moment or caught up with other people's dramas and, and things that are happening in their life that we disconnect and forget to find our truth, so that we disconnect and we forget about our, uh, ourselves even. So this is a beautiful card. If anything, it's kind of like you having the need to pull away to be able to find the answers that only you can find within yourself. All right. All right, my lovelies. And of course, we're moving on here with the Three of Swords. This is a card that not many are uh <laughs> not many are uh excited about this card when this card comes up in a reading, but there is also power in this Three of Swords. Now, the Three of Swords indicates um when you see it, if you really look at the depiction of the Three of Swords, it looks extremely painful. It's a heart with three swords going through them. You can see rain, clouds in the background. It, everything's dark and gloomy, right? But what really stands out here is the swords going through the heart. So the first instinct when I see this card is to say, I'm sorry. Why? Because it would indicate that there is some type of hurt, some type of pain that the client or if you're reading for yourself that you may currently be going through, you can really soften this card. Something broke, someone died, someone was betrayed, there was loss, pain, tragedy, and heartache. This is a visceral card. The person who receives it will often know exactly what it's referring to before you start speaking because the event casts a shadow over their life. Just as the Three of Pentacles is a journey of the mind, the Three of Swords is a transition of the soul. I don't find, I don't feel, sorry, I don't feel uh, that the card can be taken lightly, um, which is why, like I said, whenever I see the Three of Swords, if I'm doing a reading for a client, I usually apologize. I usually say I'm sorry because 
there's n there is pain in this card and there's no way of you know making it positive it is like i mentioned to you guys throughout the tarot lessons the tarot cards um have cards that represent happiness fulfillment joy but it also has cards that represent pain that represent suffering that represent hurt why because in our human experience, we will experience all the emotions, um, which is why it just, you know, distinguishes humanity from, you know, other li living things, because we are ruled by emotion. So in this lifetime, we will experience happiness, yes, but we will also uh, experience heartache and suffering. Um so there is no way of taking this card lightly. Every time I receive it in a reading, uh, some kind of universal whammy is aiming at the client. Sometimes they're lucky. Sometimes they have an elderly or ill relative who is ready to go. Sometimes, um, though they don't know to whom this card refers to, it's not always death. And this is something that I want to you know, mention very, very strongly here. Uh, again, like I said, I've seen readers that have spoken about the three of swords being uh, predicting some type of death. Now, when you're reading or when you're studying the tarot, there are a multitude of cards that represent a transition in life. But when you get the three of swords, depending on other cards that follow, it doesn't always represent death. And I've seen a few, I'm not going to name, but I've seen a few mention that this is what it represents to them. The three of swords is not death. It is heartbreak. Whether it's through a transition, as an example, if you were to pull out the major arcana, the death card, the three of swords and the 10 of swords, obviously all these three cards in combination would give a deeper message that is more resonating to that of a physical death. But try the best you can if you guys are learning to read the cards to be able to read for other people. Understand and know that it is crucial and important to be mindful as you progress, as you learn, as you continue to do readings, you will understand and you will get used to seeing certain type of cards. And though sometimes it does represent the physical actual death, don't go around saying that, you know, death is unfolding because it will traumatize people. You have to be mindful and understanding. Like I said, when I get the three of swords, the 10 of swords and the death card, it would represent to me because of my connection with my guides, that is a definite, there is a transition that's happening. There is a death that will be unfolding. However, I don't openly tell my clients, you're, you know, whoever is going to die. Like <laughs> If you guys have came to me for personal readings, those of you guys that I've been with and I've guided uh, through transitions in your life when, you know, people from the family have passed on, et cetera. Um, you guys know that there is a way that I communicate that. And most often it is more of an encouraging type of message. It is connect with, you know, depending on who the cards are telling me, connect with them. Um, there is no point to holding on to grudges or holding on to ego or who's right and who's wrong, because there is nothing more hurtful and painful in life than regret. And we don't want to have regret. We want to make sure that we release whatever it is that's holding us back from having that one-on-one -on -one connection. And there is ways of explaining or expressing certain things. And I just want to highlight that because like I said, I've seen a few that talk about the three of swords as if it is predictory of death, and it is not. Of course, cards that follow would speak about that, but always be mindful. You are telling a story, right? A story that the cards are communicating to you, but do not try to step in 
a line that one must respect and have ethics when when even consulting um because we are not above anyone when we're talking about celestials when we're talking about god when we're talking about you know our saints whatever it is that you believe in we are not above them so it is not your duty or your job to tell someone you know someone's going to pass or someone's going to die it is your duty to guide them through that transition okay just want to just want to speak about that because that is really irritating and it's very painful for people that have came to me that have gone to other readers and their family relative whatever was going through a difficult situation health wise and they had the scare of their life and they go a whole year thinking that this person's going to pass it's traumatizing so be mindful you guys and be respectful and be wise to practicing and learning um the more you connect the more you read the more you practice the more proficient you will be and always remember it is not your duty to take on as an example predicting death it is not your job okay be mindful of that and be respectful of that okay moving on here we have the four of swords and the four of swords is that uh once you go through the transition with the three of swords you're going to find the four of swords and the three of swords is painful it is hurtful it is betrayal it is heartache and the sun comes out again right with the four of swords this is the healing process the disconnecting to be able to strengthen yourself the having you know put your thoughts at ease this is a knight who is truly at rest he is surrendered by swords but doesn't need them right now the three on the wall are waiting the only one lying or near him is inert sometimes you just have to tell your brain to shut up and to be still for a bit Sometimes if you're not sure where to go or what to do, the best thing to do is have a nap and figure it out later, um, which is a funny saying because I often tell clients, especially clients that I'm working with uh, when we're talking about spell work and things like that, if you cannot surrender, meaning if you cannot just stay with your faith, have trust and let go of the situation and allow the person that's doing the spell work for you to do what they're supposed to do. Um, go take a nap if you can stop overthinking or overanalyzing because sometimes, like I said, sometimes we can be our worst enemy by overthinking, overanalyzing, overlooking everything. Sometimes you just need to take a breather. So again, the four of swords is think of it as what I just mentioned, having the need to just take a nap or disconnect from what's happening to be able to reconnect with yourself again. Um, if you're not sure, like I said, where to go or what to do, the best thing you can do is take a nap and figure it out later. Think about what we've just gone through with the Three of Swords. This was da damaging to the mind, to the body and spirit. And a rest is surely needed at this point. Um, the window behind the night show a rolling hillside and the angel of peace the whole card is geared towards uh encouraging you to take a deep deep breath unstick your tongue from the roof of your mouth and just relax this is my surrender card it usually indicates having the need to let go of having the need to be in control sometimes when we overthink or overanalyze we make it harder on ourselves. And with the four of swords, what it's initially the energy that is carrying is to surrender, to let go, to understand as an example, if you are freaking out about having to pay a bill tomorrow and you have no money, what is it going to benefit you sitting up at night, thinking about it and stressing about it when you're clearly not going to be able to make that money, right? To pay the bill tomorrow. So the four of swords speaks about, yes, there is sometimes uh, difficult situations where we have to have some type of faith, some type of trust um, in ourselves, 
in God, higher self. And sometimes we have to just trust the process and let go. And sometimes by letting go, you're no longer resisting to that which you're asking or to that which you're wanting or you're wishing or you're desiring. So if you just surrender and let go and say, I trust in the universe, I trust in God, I trust that whatever's going to happen will happen. Sometimes all you need to do is that to be able to see or experience the miracle of by tomorrow, for some reason, someone pays you money they owe you or someone gives money to you or you find a hundred dollar bill on the street, whatever the situation may be that you're able to pay that bill. So it is about releasing the need for control. Of course, depending on the cards that follow or the cards that are around, it will speak more about what the message overall is saying. But again, Four of Swords is the surrender. All right. Next, we're going with the Five of Swords. Now, if you really look at this card and see the depiction, you can see that there are men um, that are giving the back to this to this other man that's holding two swords, uh, two in the air and one um, that is standing. And what this indicates sometimes, and of course, seeing the gloominess behind it, right? Petty and self-involved thoughts keep you from noticing the people around you. You're thinking only of yourself, and this is distracting you from the greater good. The Five of Swords is kind of a sneaky card. Made to make a point about this card, think of it this way. Whose sword are those? Is he stealing them or taking them back? Intent is very important with this card, but even with good intent, it's tricky. The main character has such a smirk on his face. You're almost wishing he would trip and eat shit basically, right? <laughs> Uh, sometimes though, you have to be tricky in order to stick up for yourself. Intent is everything. So like I mentioned, if you think about it, the greater picture here to understand is there are a multitude of swords. There's five swords here, but there is also other characters in this, in this, uh, card. And it makes you question or wonder, are these all five swords his? Did he steal them? Or is he taking them back? When I see the five of swords, it indicates to me that you'd rather, as a general, you'd rather be right, even at the cost of having an argument, or even at the cost of a friendship or denting your relationship. It is about, I am right and I will argue through and through no matter whose feelings I hurt. So this is, in essence, you're winning, but it's temporary. And the bigger question here is you're winning, but at whose expense? Is it really worth arguing? about something that you disagree with, with your partner, as an example. And you are trying to make it such a point that you are right, that you hurt their feelings, you hurt their intellect, or you, as an example, insult their intelligence. Is it worth it to be right, even if you hurt their feelings, even if you embarrass them? Like, at what expense is it benefiting you? Whenever I see this five of swords, it indicates to me a person that is willing to win, even if it's just temporary, even if in the long run, um, you could ties with friendships or you end up breaking up with your partner or you end up, you know, no longer communicating with your dad or with your mom because you had an argument and you were so fixated in being the one to be right. So think of the five of swords as a temporary win that could potentially cost you more. Um, it is always, fives are always a struggle. No matter what suit it is, it's always a struggle. 
But with the five of swords is a struggle with other people because you see other people in this depiction. Um, so again, it is a winning just to take the win, but at what expense? At the expense of no longer continuing a relationship or at the expense of hurting your siblings feelings or is it worth it basically um so again five keeping in mind fives are always struggles but with the with the with the five of swords particularly it is an inner struggle not with yourself but with others so it usually would indicate a fight it would indicate it, a struggle an argument um everything that is not very very positive particularly because there is a need to uh, be defensive and it has more to do with pride okay all right my lovelies here we go um so now with the six of swords after the five of swords after the fight after the argument we move on with the six of swords it is uh basically an indication of going towards calmer waters going towards more stable emotions right uh like i mentioned to you guys um swords are never about emotions it is about communication how we communicate how we uh think and our process of thinking um in this card you see water has an important role in this card the passengers are um ferrying themselves to and their belongings across a river from rough water to smooth. They are determined to make a change in their lives and are not going back. They have recognized that it isn't working in their lives and have accepted it and in accepting have created the opportunity for change. So they are going from rough waters to smooth, literally. Look at the figures in front, hunched over and covered in blankets. Um, with the water all around it swords are acting as a shield for them they're protecting um in the back by the man who is rowing them to safety they are pointed towards new opportunities and growth and they just need to keep going so when you look at this card it usually indicates that there is a transition that's happening Yes, it can also represent a physical transition like a journey, um, moving or going, um, like I said, transitioning, traveling um, liter in the literal sense, because if you see the depiction, obviously there's a man that's rowing the boat and there is actual movement. So, but on the grander scales, it indicates being able to find more stability or going towards better opportunities or more stability, um, all the while protecting themselves, right? Because you see the swords and the swords are right in front of the hunched over figure, which would indicate some type of protection. So there is protection in moving on, or there is uh, safety in moving on, in transitioning, in you know keeping momentum or going. And like I said, actual travel can also speak about that depending on the cards that follow but the bigger message in this card is that though you've come from again the five of swords you've came from uh disputes arguments fights or even physical altercations going towards the six of swords going towards more calmer waters moving on from that or transitioning to a safetier environment um, if it's not in the actual sense of traveling. Okay. All right. My lovelies moving along here, we have the seven of swords, and this is not a very liked card, right? But with many of the tarot cards, when we talk about, uh, the tarot in general, there is a necessity for everything, right? We shouldn't, um, we shouldn't hate or uh, hate to deal with certain energies, although sometimes it can be frustrating, especially if you're the one that's living the situation. But there is need for all of them. Why? Because 
Like I mentioned, we are humans. We are ruled by emotion. We will experience many emotions. And in that, others will also act different ways. Uh, some will go above and beyond while others will betray you. So there is a need for every single card. Now, with the Seven of Swords, such a big liar. <laughs> That's what I think whenever I see the Seven of Swords. It is definitely not an ethical person. It is definitely not uh, a person that is trustworthy. Honestly, if you look at this card, the guy is sneaking away with something that clearly doesn't belong to him. It could be someone stealing back something from the person that took it from them. But how often does that happen? I don't think that all lies are bad. There are some lies that we tell to protect ourselves or others. These aren't bad lies inherently. I think that lies that start to corrode us uh, are the ones we use to protect ourselves from ourselves. Makes sense, right? Why is it bad? If you're not, if you're not uh, a follower of the Judeo-Christian ethic um, or any type of religion, it's not a sin. So who cares, right? I think that we should care. I don't think I'm being over dramatic here, but I strongly feel like lying shoes on your soul. Um, one of the reasons we're on this planet is to seek the truth, whether that is faith or science, friendship or love, uh, our true calling or our, you know, uh, tapping into our gifts, anything that derives from the truth um, or any, anything that doesn't derive from the truth is bad. Are you, uh, as an example, are you working a job you hate? you feel bad. Are you with a person you don't like? Your relationship sucks. It works as a, it works as a disease in the truest sense. Dis-ease, right? It makes your soul become ill at ease if you wonder, if you wander too far. Now, so this guy is sneaking off with the swords with a big shift um with I'm completely lost you guys. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh okay, so this guy is sneaking off with the swords with a big shit eating grin on his face. Um but what's this? Back in the corner of the card in most basic decks there is a group of men which with swords and spears creating the hill in the Lilluan deck or uh sneaky pin is reappealing down the cliff and i have to think that those men are waiting at the bottom of the cliff for him the action of stealing is so completely brazen in this card seems like he's going to get busted in just a few minutes What's done in the dark will come to light. And even if it doesn't happen right away, the truth will come out. Even if no one else saw his lie, he knows his soul is going to get a pretty good ding on it. Um, I think that if we lie to protect ourselves from ourselves, when we don't want to have hard uh, conversations uh, from ourselves, when we don't want to have hard conversations breaking up, as an example, when we are afraid to fail, uh, never leaving this awful job, et cetera, et cetera. And when we certain, when we are certain we uh, can do what we want with other people and remain untouched, um, whether it's cheating, whether it's betraying, whether it's deceiving, we don't want to have all these hard conversations because it's easier to buy the bullshit that we're serving up. So basically what this card represents is that of, you know, being sneaky, um, being deceitful, not being honest, not being correct. Um, there is intent in this card as well. Um, being actively aware that what you're doing is not necessarily something that you will get an applause for. Um, so the seven of swords, whenever I see this card, 
it usually indicates to me, depending, of course, the cards that are around it, it usually indicates that there is, um, that they're not being completely honest, that they're not being transparent, uh, that they are very aware that they are being deceitful. Um, and like I mentioned, in other decks, you can see a bunch of men um, by the hill, and it's it's almost as a reminder that though you may try to do sneaky shit, at the end of the day, everything will come to light. Everything will come out in the open. And ultimately, um, not so much about being caught, but ultimately having to deal with the consequences of that. You cannot be a shitty person to someone and expect the universe to bless you and to give you many reasons to be grateful. Um, it, it's kind of like the saying goes, you know, as an example, a person that has this necessity or this need to continuously gossip or talk about other people behind their back is usually an indication that that person themselves are very unhappy in the life that they have. Why? Because a person that is happy, a person that is thriving is too busy watering their own grass, like to be looking at other people's grasses. You know what I mean? So seven of swords, not necessarily a very good card, but it does forewarn. So moving on, we have here the eight of swords. And this is another card that has almost, uh, you know, when people get to, when people get to see this, this card being pulled out right in their readings uh with clients it usually indicates they kind of get nervous you know <laughs> um but this has more to do mentioning to you guys the suit of swords is more mental it is our thoughts it is our process of thinking and it is even sometimes enslaving ourselves um with our own ideas that instead of helping us thrive actually suppresses us. Now, the eight of swords here, this woman is surrounded by swords, her hands are bound, and she's blindfolded, but her feet are free. If she is careful, and if she can conquer her fear, she can walk right out of that cage. She will likely be cut and bleeding when she's out, but she'll finally be free, and it will be worth it. The fear is the thing here. It's all... Um, it's all consuming and paralytic. This card is about being trapped by your own anxiety and allowing anxiety to direct your life. It's, pre it's a pretty serious card. Um, and most of the time, no one on the outside can see this struggle that you're going through. So this is why I, I, you know, often tell clients or clients when I'm doing them a reading that, they feel trapped or they feel like they're stuck in a situation, but it has more to do on a mental aspect. They're not really stuck. It's kind of like the best example I can give you guys is um, think of it this way. A woman that is in a relationship that is a violent relationship or where there is a lot of uh, psychological or even physical abuse. Uh, may see themselves stuck and bind it to that person that they're with. Um, and they don't see past what they're currently experiencing and what they're going through. But it would be, even if they had, as an example, even if they had no family, if they had no friends, anyone to rely on, there are helplines out there. There are people that you can contact that can help you get out of that situation. And though sometimes it's easier said than done, and it it's not, I'm trying to make a point here. It's not to disrespect people that have gone through domestic violence or anything like that, um, which I've dealt with many uh, that have gone through those situations. The thing about it is that we, when we're going through something, we can only see past what we're living, past what we're going, what our current circumstance is. And it's really difficult to detach yourself from that when you're living it on everyday basis. So though they may find themselves or feel like they are literally binded, literally stuck, there is help out there. There is people that can help them get out of that situation if they only 
you know, reach out or if they only overcome the fear that knowing without a doubt people or men or women that are the abuser um, psychologically affect people in such a way that damage them um, and hurt them in such a way that makes them feel like they are unable um, when they're very capable. So again, all they would all they would need is to reach out. All they would need is to pick up that phone, call for help, and people will come to their help. People will come to their rescue. People will be there to support them because there is thousands out there that have experienced and have gone through something like that. But the eight of swords here is an indication of feeling that way, of being so caught up in what you're experiencing on an everyday basis that it is extremely painful and it you just don't see a way out. Um, another way of seeing, uh, another way of thinking about it, it's kind of like if you think back when you were a kid and you did something really horrible, right? That you knew your parents were gonna either whoop your ass. <laughs> If you're Mexican like me, you knew without a doubt either you're going to get a whooping or that you were just going to get in really, really big trouble. And sometimes it could be so ridiculous in our mind. Uh, I will tell you guys, as an example, when I was a kid, I was probably 10, 11 years old. I got into really big trouble and I was literally in my room praying to God that you know, my dad wasn't that mad at me because I just, I was over it. I was thinking I'm over it. Like I'm done with life. I was a child, but just the thought of getting in trouble, it was like, there was no way out, you know, in that moment in time. And the eight of swords is, it, that's what it represents. It carries that anxiety. It carries that fear. It carries the, I can't see past the situation. Uh, and then many years over or many years later, you get over it. Obviously, you've gone through other things that have made you stronger. But you look back and it's kind of like a chuckle because you're like, I really thought my life was over at that point in time. That's what our mind does, right? It plays tricks on us. Well, this is what the Eight of Swords would indicate. Um, but uh, again, like I said, it is more of the mind, more of the feeling stuck of feeling like there is no way out and there is no way out, not necessarily because there's actual physical no way out, but more to do with the fact that you're living it in the moment that you're so caught up and you can't see past what the current circumstance is. All right, my lovelies. Now we go here with the nine of swords. Now this is uh, another card that scares people. <laughs> um, and again, it has everything to do with what is mental. Uh, the first question I ask when I see this card is, why aren't you sleeping? As it usually indicates, um, this is about anxiety and sleeplessness, a pain in your stomach, a wrinkle on your forehead. All of these things come up with the nine of swords. Your mind is too full. Your troubles seem vast and unimaginable, and you just can't put them down. Anxiety comes when we can't control the outcome of something. What if I have a disease? What if they don't love me? What if I fail? The uncontrolled dizziness that comes while we're spinning. That's what this energy uh, with the nine of swords feels like. It is, you know, trying to figure out what our life will look like. Um, it's exhausting yet keeps us from sleep. So when I get this card, it usually indicates to me that the corn or client is at their breaking point. They are tossing and turning. This is, you know, what fears keep you up at night or your biggest fear keeps you up at night. Um, as an example, when I'm doing a love reading and I see this card, it usually indicates to me that the corn or client, um, has completely exhausted themselves. At this point, they are mentally, physically, and emotionally exhausted. It's not being able to see uh, past what you're living, what you're experiencing at this, at this point in time. It has been so fixated on, you know, having the need to be in control of the situation. It's almost as if, as an example, you are in a relationship and you feel the breakup or you feel that, 
it is coming to an end and the tighter you grip, the tighter you freak out, the more you want to be close to the partner. It almost feels like they keep pushing further and further away. And why? Because of this nine of swords. It is the anxiety. It is the nightmare. It is the not resting, the not surrendering, the not putting your hands up and saying it's going to be what it's going to be. If anything, it is the staying up thinking of other thousands of scenarios that could go, to, could go wrong instead of thinking in a positive way. So again, nine of swords is a difficult card because it does indicate a lot of anxiety, depending on the cards that follow would uh, speak about, you know, even depression or uh, being suicidal just depends. Um, but it is a very, a very, you know, dark, dark card because it is a representation when we are in a point in a point in our lives where we are extremely in a very extremely dark place mentally. All right, my lovelies. And finally, here we have the Ten of Swords. Now, the Ten of Swords is another card that is not necessarily a good card, um, you know, with the there is an ending cycle. There is an ending cycle. But one thing I do want to say about the tens is uh, access, right? It's the tens are just overdone so much. Um, how flipping long can you stand and wave at a rainbow? What happens after that? Uh, the tens remind me of self-differentiation. They are all about having a poorly uh, differentiated self and carrying around other people's nonsense and drama. Um, so tens always indicate an ending cycle. It always indicates the conclusion of something. Um, but with the Ten of Swords, keeping in mind it is, uh, you know, the intellect and communication and how we process our thoughts. Uh, this is just the worst damn card, honestly. Uh, the best thing that you can say when this card shows up is that at least things won't get any worse. And that's the positive way of viewing this Ten of Swords. Because when I see this card, it indicates, okay, the client is going through a very difficult situation. They have gone through it. They have really you know, came out of the crossfire, but, right, that major but, but it's over. They're coming out of it. Um, and once we are or hit rock bottom, there's no other way than to go up. So there is positivity in this card if you learn to see it that way. Um, so this is, you know, the best thing, like I said, that you can see this card shows up is that, it can't get any worse. This is literally the bottom. Um, it's excessive pain. <clears throat> it's excessive, painful, excruciating, and final. Uh, so in this card, the guy is flat on the ground. Ten of swords are stuck in him, not near or around him, but and through. There isn't just ill intent around this card. There are goddamn flesh wounds. Uh, let's not take it or let's not look at it too lightly. Um, but the question here is, is he dead? Now, if you ask that question, is he dead? You would hope he is, right? Because if he isn't, he's in an awfully uncomfortable situation and a very painful. Let's think about what death means in the tarot. The death card, um, like we spoke about in the major arcanas means change is coming whether you like it or not. The 10 of swords can mean literal death, uh, but in a more often refers to the person hitting rock bottom. In this way, I see it as a positive card. The weight of it is that the missteps, the mistakes and the powerless feeling uh, have won and he is down. This isn't always self-inflicted. Sometimes he's been attacked the doubt though that comes from within the swords are all about your brains uh your brain remember it's one thing for someone to call you 
to call you a name. It's another uh, another entirely different thing for you to believe it and to take it into you. The saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's not true. Not at all. Most of the time when uh, this card comes up in a reading, I can hear what the client is doing to themselves in their head. And it's scary sometimes, you guys. Uh, people can be so mean to themselves, so abusive. If a stranger on the street said those things to me, you're stupid, you're weak, you're a coward, uh, you're ugly, you're worthless, I would probably punch them in the throat, right? However, we're so quick to say those things to ourselves. We are unable at times to self-differentiate and to tell the difference between someone's opinion and the truth. It's hard and oftentimes uh, we're taught to listen to the criticism and take it into us. But um, quit doing that to your kids, you guys. Teach them to question everything, every even you sometimes. I keep seeing all of these motivational memes uh, that say, you know, get up. You only fail if you stay down. You can do it. Yay. Stuff like that. And uh, it's kind of patronizing, of course. I am not advocating digging a hole and then setting up the house in it or setting the house on fire, but there is some value in recognizing that life, um, that life just kicked your ass and you need a minute because that's what everyone goes through. Uh, like I mentioned, there is no cards in the tarot that does, that does not symbolize or speak about a circumstance and situation in the human experience. And even the Ten of Swords, as painful as it is, uh, it is a reminder that though you may be, you know, in a very low point in your life, though you just came out of some type of heartbreak, some type of painful situation, the positive in this is that it's the end. You know, you've, you've done it. You've, you know, you're in the process of transitioning. You're in the process of uh, taking in that experience and turning it into wisdom, into knowledge, into experience. Um, it is a heavy card, like I mentioned, uh, but it is positive in the aspect of knowing that without a doubt, though you're going through difficulty, just know and keep in mind that you have overcame it. Why? Because you're at the ending cycle of that suffering or that heartache or that painful uh, difficult situation that you were going through. So this is the perfect time to access what you're going to do next, what you're going to try in order to avoid this feeling in the future, to decide what you want, to figure out how to make a tomorrow different than today. If we're to sum up the Ten of Swords, which evidently I'm about to do, I would say um, stay down. You're down there for a reason figure out what it is and then have a nap, then get back up and dust the dirt off of you, okay? So like I mentioned, not a lot of cards in the tarot are necessarily uh, beautiful, but that is life. Sometimes life is messy. All right, my lovelies. Now we're here with the page of swords. And like I mentioned to you guys, pages, uh, we're gonna speak now about the royals. Pages always have the spirit of earth, um, regardless of the element that it is. So as we can see here, the page of swords, it is the spirit of earth with the element of swords. Uh, page of swords is a, it is a representation of communication or cutthroat communication. Uh, it is about, um, if you guys did pay attention to the previous video, if you guys haven't, go and watch them because I speak to you guys about certain things that is important to understand. Um, like all of the pages, there is a huge burst of energy that comes with the page of swords, but there is very little direction or experience. He is chatty and curious. He has tons of energy and his ideas are flying around. They aren't investigated though, or given much consideration. There is a lot of initiative with this page. He's a sharp kid, um, actually cheesy, 
uh, will help you remember the Page of Swords, sharp as a tack, razor sharp, intellect sharp wit, and looking sharp. So like I mentioned to you guys in the previous video, pages always indicate to me uh, children that are adolescents or that are in their teens, um, if it comes up as a partner, a person that the client or client is dealing with or that you may be dealing with, it could indicate that they are immature. Um, it would indicate someone that is playful, someone that is very chatty. With the Page of Swords, though, keep in mind, pages don't have a lot of experience. So this is the type of energy that would remind you of, you know, a, a teenage, uh, a teenager that is in school and hears a rumor about a friend and then they run and they tell their friend the rumor they heard, whether it's true or not, is not their business. They just knew and wanted to give feedback. That's the type of energy you get with the page of swords. They don't really like gather information and make sure that it is to the T or that it is coming from a uh, real source. It's more of, I heard about this, I heard about that type of energy. Um, so again, like I mentioned, it usually indicates to me uh, a child or a teenager um, that the corn may be a mother or father too, or if they are dealing and it comes up as the person that they're dealing with, it would indicate someone that could be very abrasive, someone that is very quick to make decisions without really thinking someone that uh, gets caught up in the moment, doesn't really get, you know, very quick to jump to conclusions or to jump into assumptions. Uh, because again, there is a need because it is the element of swords, which is communication. There is a major need to communicate regardless of what I tell you, if it's a rumor or not, regardless of whose other life I sear up, I don't care. I just need to get through that. Like, drop the bomb of the information I just found out. That's kind of the energy of the page of swords. <laughs> All right, moving along here, we have the knight of swords. Now, knights are always obviously much more mature than the pages, um, much more, uh, a person that is much more experienced or an energy of a person that is much more experienced. Um, it, it definitely element of air. So it would symbolize someone that's antsy and on the go, always in his head, always moving and challenging himself and others. The horses hoofs are, uh, aren't touching the ground. This guy is the opposite of the Knight of pentacles. Like we just learned from the previous video, um, sword high in the air armor under his flashy robe. I swear it's the tarot equivalent to, of come at me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of energy that I see when I think of, you know, the Knight of Swords. It's like, step up. Like, if you're going to say something, like, do something about it. That's the type of energy here that we get, uh, which is why I said the equivalent of, come at me, bro. Uh, there is much intellect here, but not so much forethought. He will ride his horse or run his mouth until he smacks right into a wall, Um without ever noticing how close the wall is getting to his face. You really don't want to, um, you really do not want this, uh, do it on your, you know, on your side though. My friend, as an example, said that, that, that sometimes you meet people who are so arrogant that you can tell they've never been punched, uh, when they deserved it. And I'm sure many of you guys can connect with that because we've all uh, met someone that is just so arrogant or so cocky or that say certain things and they usually get away with it because people will usually um, excuse their behavior by saying, oh, that's just the way they are. Um, but then they meet you, right? And you're like, this person clearly hasn't been smacked around. Like, uh, this is the type of energy with the Knight of Swords. It is a person that... Um, is more experienced obviously than the page, but they don't really think about stuff. Like they say things again, air swords communication, right? There's this massive need to communicate. Um, but it, be it could become very aggressive in their way of talking or their way of expressing, because obviously you see him in, in, in armor, um, and very quick. And you can see the horse is definitely not, with the hooves on, on the ground. So it, it's a person that is very quick 
to react. It is the type of person that you start arguing with and they, uh, you know, have a big ass mouth, um, type of energy. Um, so again, keeping in mind, um, this is like a very abrasive type of energy here. Um, a good shot in the face will help anyone regain a bit of humility and remember that they're not always the smartest person in the room. So this is, this could happen, um, or this could represent a person that has a tendency of, you know, speaking, uh, without necessarily thinking because they don't have the experience or the wisdom of that of the king. Um, so they can speak, uh, in a way that could become potentially uh, uncomfortable for other people, or that could potentially be a bit disrespectful. You know, um, this is a person that definitely likes to ruffle other people's feathers. Um, and there is a bit of arrogance here in this energy as well. If this comes up, uh, it would usually indicate to me a person that is between the ages of, I would say, their uh, early 20s all the way to mid 30s. Uh, if it is a representation of a person that you're dealing with or a partner or a husband, it would represent someone that is extremely immature and they're very quick to get physical uh, when there's an altercation or when there is an argument. Uh, this is someone that doesn't necessarily think things through. They just act based on instinct, okay? All right, now we're moving on here with the Queen of Swords. And again, keeping in mind the element is swords, intellect, communication. Um, Queen of Swords, out of all the queens, um, it is a energy of, understanding that all queens have spirit of water. Why? Because spirit of water is, uh, water is the feminine energy. So though her element is swords, she still has spirit of water. So the same thing, something I forgot to mention to you guys, sorry. Um, Knight of swords is um, always going to have uh, the, whatever, whatever knight it is in this case is, uh, swords their element is swords but a knight always carries um air element so uh, not to go much into that because obviously we just spoke about knight of swords it is it's element but also has spirit of um spirit of swords um and that's for all knights as well okay moving on queen of swords spirit of water element of swords here she just doesn't give a damn about your motivations or what happens to you because of your actions she's a big picture kind of gal and she cuts away all of the emotion and feelings to get to the point um when you guys were studying the major arcanas we spoke about the justice card and much like uh, the Queen of Swords, I feel like the Queen of Swords carries some of that Justice card energy, right? Um, to the point, uh, th they don't make decisions based on emotion. They make decisions based on their intellect, what makes sense to them, what is right and what is wrong type of thing or type of energy. There's absolutely no emotion um, in this card. She is incredibly smart. She's uh, freaky, <laughs> uh, intimidating, smart, and she really doesn't have the time or patience to mess around with you. She is stern, fair, and has a very sharp tongue. She can be intimidating, but, but once uh, she's on your side, or once, I should say, once she accepts or admits that uh, she likes you, uh, she can obviously keep it in mind, every queen has spirit of water. She will tap more into that feminine energy. Um, but as you can see here, she is sitting on her throne with a sword straight up as in ready to execute or ready to bring the sword down to cut through the BS, to be able to see or understand the situation more clearly. Um, it's as if you have an army behind you. She is strong, and she is uh, independent and forthright 
a complete badass, honestly. Now, something I'm going to tell you guys, when you're doing readings or when you're reading for yourself and you're studying the tarot, there's going to be, as an example, there's going to be certain um, royals that will come up often for you. And they usually would speak about, obviously, knowing and understanding what each um uh, element represents as an example swords would represent everything to do with the air element right which would be aquarius gemini or libra now depending on what energy you vibrate to as an example if you're a female and you're doing yourself a reading um one of the things that will come up for me most of the time is the queen of swords though i'm an earth energy right because i am a capricorn um, but the queen of swords has more of the energy that I vibrate to. And when you look at my chart, you would understand, right? Because I do have a lot of earth energy, but I also have a lot of air energy. And my moon is in an air sign. So again, uh, usually represented or depicted as the queen of swords. Uh, this is a type of personality that doesn't it's not the touchy feely type. It's the type that knows what's right and what's wrong. They hold themselves to very high standards, but they also hold others to very high standards as well. Um, as an example, if you're dealing with the queen of pentacles, uh, they could be a bit more forgiving or the queen of cups, absolutely more forgiving. Um, you know, the, the queen of wands, as an example, could be forgiving, but they keep that behind their behind their mind. You know, I remember you did this uh we'll squash it but i will keep in mind and the queen of swords is like once you do me wrong like i bring the sword down and cut that link or that connection i will never allow you to hurt me or i will never allow you to cross me that's the type of energy of the queen of swords but why you know a lot of people think that swords especially talking about the royals that they're not necessarily emotional but when we talk about the queens Queens have still, they are ruled by the spirit of water, which is feminine energy. They still have the loving or nurturing side. However, they will express or show it in a very different way. With the queen of swords, it's like they hold themselves, like I said, to very high standards, but they also expect others to meet them to where their level is. So if the queen of swords ever trusts you or gives you their trust or gives you their love and you betray that, there's no coming back from that um, because they will know in their head, this person is not right for me because they've hurt me. Therefore, I will cut down with that connection or that link or that relationship and keep it pushing type of thing. Whereas an example, water queen of cups um, would be more forgiving or even allow certain things that the queen of swords would definitely not put up with. All right. And finally, here we are with the King of Swords, keeping in mind uh, whatever element that king is, all kings have the spirit of fire, which is the element of the masculine or energy of the masculine, sorry. Um, with the King of Swords, much like the Queen of Swords, um, this is a person that is not ruled by emotion. This is definitely not a person that is very expressive in how they feel or what they're feeling. This is a person that executes or acts or basically takes action behind how they feel. This is the person, let's talk about the King of Swords. The King of Swords is not going to be the type to tell you, you know, oh, I love you and you mean the world to me. They are going to provide for you. They are going to take care of you. They are going to protect you to let you know that you mean something to them, right? Because we protect what is most valuable to us. Um, so this is not the emotional, touchy, lovey feeling. Um, politically, a king, not someone you choose. He's given to you even, he's given to you even imposed on you. Uh, king of Swords is very to the point, very cutthroat. So as an example, if you get the King of Swords as a representation of someone you're dealing with or someone you're getting to know, this is a person that if they know that they want you, they will attain you. They will like show you. They will be in your face about it, much like the King of Wands. 
Um, but with the King of Swords, they will expect, they will tell you what they're wanting from you, but also what they expect from you versus the King of Wands. For example, King of Wands will kind of, you know, uh, honey you up or butter you up before they tell you what they expect from you. King of Swords will not do that. They will tell you, uh, I am interested and let me get to know you. Give me your number um, because I'm looking for this. You know, they will be very much to the point. He is positive figure. However, as it is his job to keep the kingdom running, part of this is being sure that everyone has food to eat. Another part is throwing down for anyone um, you're responsible for. A good king should do both with equal enthusiasm. Think of how kings use their swords. Uh, tonight, their comrades uh, to execute their foes. There is a balance here. This king is very similar to, uh, like I had mentioned, uh, the Queen of Swords and the Justice card. Uh, he is fair and emotion doesn't rule him. He doesn't make uh, decisions based off emotion, uh, much like the Queen of Swords. Um, if you enter or if he enters into a decision, it's very much because he knows without a doubt that that is the best decision to make. If you look behind his throne, though, you can see a dense fog bank. In other uh, basic decks, you'll see uh, the tiniest steam of water behind him. Both are indications of the tiniest bit of give a damn that he holds for you and, you, and your feelings. He is the judge or the policeman. He is intelligent, quick, and sometimes very judgmental. Um, for real, you guys. <laughs> Uh, his way or the highway type of energy, fill your hand, uh, fill your hand, you son of a BS, you know, type of energy. So when we talk about this, um, being just um, uh, not really caring for your emotions, um, what I mean by that is the best way of understanding it is as an example, if you are dealing with this king of swords and it just so happens that, for example, uh, you have a neighbor, right? Let's just say you have a neighbor and you guys get along and you guys are very cordial with each other and you guys have known each other for a while, right? And let's just say he's the king of swords and you tell him or you ask him, hey, are they hiring where you're working at? Because I just got laid off. And he will tell you, yeah, yeah, of course, go ahead and apply, da, 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 da. And once you apply, let's say, um, as an example, that he has a high ranking position, which King of Swords usually does, um, they give him your application and he reviews it. Though he knows you, though you've known each other for a while, though whatever you want to throw in there um, that you would think he's going to do me the favor, right? Because he knows me, you know, we're cool with each other, whatever. If he feels like you are not, you don't have, or you don't fit the criteria of what they're looking for, or you don't have the type of experience that he is looking for uh, to hire a person in that position, he will pass you by. He will choose someone else. And then you're left in your feelings and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe he didn't. It's not that he, you know, was not, being understanding of the fact that he knew you, but he will always put what is right before anything. So if he sees that there's other applicants that have more experience that would fit best that position, he will choose whoever has earned it, whoever he feels is more experienced. Um, it's the same thing as an example, you have a friend or a relative He's the king of swords and he starts a business or he's selling t-shirts as an example. And you're like, hey, I'm your cousin. Give me the huck up. Um, he's going to be like, uh, no, this is a business and I run a business and you're going to pay what everyone else pays. And if you don't like that, then go somewhere else. Uh, that type of energy. He is not about doesn't care about your feelings, doesn't care about um, what you think. He is more to what is just, what is fair. Um, very much, you know, 
very much to, to the point. Um, there is no preference. There is no nothing like that with this King of Swords. Obviously, keeping in mind, like I mentioned to you guys with every cards, uh, whether it's the major arcanas or the minor arcanas, um, inverted, it would just represent the very opposite. As an example, King of Swords inverted would be a person that is very possessive, a person that is very selfish, uh, someone that abuses power or someone that would abuse power um, to what is to their benefit. Um, this is a very, very, you know, determined individual. This is a person that is very methodical. Um, so again, inverted would just be the complete opposite of honorable and all of that good stuff. All right, my lovelies. All right. So I hope you guys have a better understanding of the element of swords and the minor arcana swords. Um, we will see each other Next time, we will be talking about wands and following with cups as well. I wish you guys the very best. Hope you guys learned. Hope you loved it. Like, share, and comment. And we will see each other soon. Till then, bye.